welcome back. In this lecture 5, I will discuss about polymer molecular weights and also give a bird's eye view of polymer science and technology and also give few examples of common polymers. Let us begin with molecular weights of polymers. Just a, just a uh, thing about molecular weight, the molecular weight also simultaneously used as a molar mass, whereas we, we generally do not give any unit for molecular weight, but for molar is molar mass are generally expressed as gram per mole. Molar mass is probably the more accurate way of expressing, expressing molecular weights of any compound including polymers, but in generally polymers are expressed as molecular weight without any unit. Polymer molecular weights are very large typically in the range of few thousands to a million. Now, unlike conventional chemicals the molecular weights of polymer in a particular sample are different. For example, if I take a benzene bottle all the molecules of benzene in that particular bottle is same, but if I take a polystyrene bottle then the molecular weights of the chains of polystyrene molecules are not same all of the polymer molecules present in that particular bottle are not same they are not uniform and we call that sample as a poly dispersed sample. Now, because of this non uniformity of molecular weights in a particular sample, we generally expressed polymer samples molecular weight as an average molecular weight and we can do averaging in various ways and depending upon the way we are doing the averaging, the name changes. So, the numerical value assigned to the molecular weight of polymer depends on the way in which this non-uniformity is averaged and these are the typical four average molecular weights are reported in the literature of which this number average molecular weight and weight average molecular weights are most important and most frequently reported in the literature. Now, as most almost every synthetic polymers are polydispersed in nature, there are some exception in case of natural polymers like proteins where in a protein sample all the polymer chains or macromolecular chains are having same molecular weight. Now, what is the importance of polymer molecular weight? Why should we bother about molecular weights of polymer. Now, for any application we always look for good properties and there is no exception for polymer based products. So, the polymer based product must have good properties and good properties in most cases comes from the high molecular weight of polymer molecules. So, if you just for example, plot mechanical properties versus polymer molecular weight, we see that there is a sharp increase in the mechanical properties with molecular weight and it levels off at high molecular weight. Simultaneously to make the product, the polymer samples should undergo a processing step in which we basically make the final product and flow polymer flow is a very important property there because polymers are generally melted and give a particular shape of the final product. So, good processability is generally favored by low molecular weight. So, ease of processing is actually inversely related to molecular weight higher, higher is the molecular weight lower is the ease of processing. So, this is a dilemma for a for a design engineer or polymer engineer 
it's a, there is a dilemma which whether to make a or synthesize a polymer of high molecular weight or polymer of low molecular weight. So, depending upon the final application, depending upon the property requirement, plastics market actually contain different grades of each polymer and different grades actually most cases have different molecular weight of polymer chains. So, depending upon the final application, one can choose between these different grades and uh, and finally, uh, get the product from this polymer sample. Of course, there are few properties like refractive index and hardness at ambient temperature, they do not uh, significantly dependent on the molecular weights of polymers. Now, how to quantify or give expression for this uh, sample at uh, these different molecular weights? For example, number average molecular weight is, is just, just the arithmetic averaging. So, M n is uh, given by total mass by total moles or W by n, W is the total mass by total number of moles. So, we can write as a summation of W i summation of n i, where W i is the weight of the sample having molecular weight of m i and similarly n i is the number of moles of polymer molecules having molecular weight of m i. So, we can express in terms of n i m i divided by n i and we can just uh, put this to get x i m i, where x i is the mole fraction of the polymer molecules having molecular weight of m i. Now, we can also rearrange this to n i we can write as w i by m i. So, we can rearrange it and just write this. So, this is the weight fraction of the particular sample divided by total weight which will give us the weight fraction. So, this small w i or w i w in a smaller case i is the weight fraction of the polymer sample having molecular weight of m i. So, using this expression we can calculate either of this expression we can calculate the number average molecular weight. Similarly, m w we can write weight fraction of i sample into molecular weight. So, w i this is the weight of that particular sample having molecular weight of m i so these are the expressions for m n and m m w but we always prefer use in terms of weight fraction because when we 
do a fractionation of a polymer sample, it is always better to have or it is always easy to report the different fraction in terms of weight fraction rather than number fraction or mole fraction. So, that is why these expressions are useful and these are typically used for determining polymer molecular weight. There are two more molecular weight uh, which we will also see just to uh, recap that M n is uh, we deduced in last uh, uh, slide that M n is given by summation of x i m i where x i is the mole fraction of the polymer molecules with molecular weight m i in a sample. We rearrange to get this where w i is the weight fraction of polymer molecule with molecular weight of m i in a sample and weight average molecular weight was expressed as summation of w i which is the weight fraction multiplied by m i. There are two more molecular weights uh, we uh, mentioned in um, just a while back m z which is expressed as this and m v which is viscosity average molecular weight which is expressed as this expression. Again these expressions are probably more useful because this is related to weight fraction rather than mole fraction. So, for a polymer sample when you determine a polymer sample we will use these expressions in this particular expression n i is the number or moles of polymer molecules with molecular weight m i in a particular sample. And for any synthetic sample all m z is always greater than m w which is greater than m v and which is greater than m n. Now, in a synthetic polymer or any sample polymer sample this is typically how the polymer chains are distributed in terms of their molecular weight. So, in number distribution this is the number fraction or mole fraction of particular fraction with molecular weight of m i. So, if we plot this with molecular weight m i then the curve look like this which means that in a particular polymer sample the lower molecular weights actually dominates by number. If you count then in a particular sample it is the lower molecular weights which will have more number in that particular sample. But if we talk about mass then the distribution look like this. So, in this case we plotted weight fraction versus uh, molecular weight molecular weight of particular polymer and in this case you can see that the in terms of mass the distribution look like this. So, the polymers having lower molecular weight they have and the polymers having higher molecular weight have they have in low weight fraction whether the in a particular sample the polymers with intermediate molecular weight they actually dominates in terms of weight fraction. So, we how do how do you basically quantify this polymer distribution? Now, we this is very difficult way to properly dis, uh, show the distribution, but generally it is shown as polydispersity index where in, in modern time we express this as dispersity d cut which is expressed as m w by m n earlier it used to be called as polydispersity index. So, if you have if I have a polymer sample weight fraction and molecular weight if I have a distribution like this or I have a sample we have a distribution like this then the d value for this sample dispersity of this sample will be much higher compared to this sample. So, if this is sample A and this is sample B. So, d cut of A would be lower than d cut of sample B. Now, this is a more standard way of expressing the 
breadth of polymer molecular weights present in a particular sample. Now, we also know the relationship between degree of polymerization with molecular weight from our earlier lectures and it is shown as this for this particular example of polystyrene where this n is number of repeat unit as well as number of structure unit. So, n is degree of polymerization. So, molecular weight is given by degree of polymerization multiplied by the molecular weight of this structural unit or repeat unit which is n multiplied by 104 which is the molecular weight of this particular unit. Now, we can also express degree of polymerization as molecular weight by m from this expression and because molecular weights are average molecular weights. So, degree of polymerization also expressed as different average degree of polymerization. So, if you use molecular weight as number average molecular weight then we call it number average degrees of polymerization and if we use m w weight average molecular weight then we call this as a weight average degrees of polymerization and generally this is written as x n or x n bar and this is x w or x w bar. Now, for a polymer like this we have shown earlier that molecular weight is given by d p multiplied by average of molecular weight of the average, uh, uh, average molecular of the structure unit which constituted the polymer and or it is uh, half of the degree of polymerization multiplied by the molecular weight of repeat unit. So, in this particular example the repeat unit molecular weight is, is 192. So, the molecular weight is d p and average molecular weight of two, mo two structural units. So, degree of polymerization d p is in this case twice n twice n multiplied by 192 by 2, 2 twice n multiplied by 96 or n into 192. Just give a example how this uh, molecular weight calculations are done. So, this is the example where a polystyrene sample is com com composed of this fraction, these weight fractions and uh, this is a hypo hypothetical uh, problem. In, in actual case you actually get a uh, continuous uh, value of molecular weights uh, and weight fraction corresponding weight fraction, but in a hypothetical situation if we fractionate sample and get this uh, fraction which has this corresponding molecular weight then how to calculate the molecular weights different molecular weights for this particular sample. So, these are my data weight fraction and these are the mole corresponding molecular weights. So, to find out m n we need to find out this particular value weight fraction divided by molecular weight of that particular sample or this particular fraction. So, we get this and we get the summation of this. Similarly, for m w we need to find out this term summation of these terms. So, we get individual terms and then sum up. Similarly, for m z we actually need to find out sum of this particular sum. So, we actually get the individual terms and then sum it up. So, m can m n can be calculated by 1 over this term weight fraction divided by m i which gives you this uh, value. Similarly, m w gives you this value and m z gives you this value and as you can see m z is greater than m w greater than m n. Now, just a uh, point to clarify that uh, in this case the calculation turns out this number, but in practice when you report polymer molecular weight we do not uh, give polymer molecular weights in such a accurate uh, number. We generally round it off the last two digit with 40 or last three digit 
in hundreds because in practice we cannot actually determine the molecular weights in this uh, uh, correct fashion or in this accurate fashion. Now, we will move to the uh, big picture of polymer science and technology, we actually see or look from a by from a top then how the polymer chain actually uh, looks like in different life stages. So, we will look at different life stages and transformation for polymers. The central, central is the polymer molecules and how do you get this polymer sample, you get it from a natural resources. We have shown different given the example of different natural polymers in the first lecture or in most of the cases majority cases we get it from raw materials which are nothing but monomers. How do you get monomers? In few cases which is very low in number we get from renewable resources but in majority of cases we get from petroleum resources. And the process of converting the monomers to polymerization polymers is called polymerization and we get the polymers in solution if we are doing the polymerization in a solution or if we are doing the polymerization uh, without any solu uh, solvent, solvent we get it in a bulk. And we isolate the polymers in the form of powder or pellets or sometimes in, in a heterogeneous form like emulsion. Now, in some applications which are not a majority application, but few applications these polymers are used in the formulation like they are part of the other in ingredients, they are actually added with other in ingredients to get the final uh, products uh, like say paint or um, some um, medical applications like eye drops uh, and there are many other adhesives, uh, there are many other such examples where polymer is one of the ingredient than the uh, uh, along with the other ingredients. So, in this case we use this uh, the polymers in this uh, in this stage as an application of polymers in formulations. But in most cases after the isolation of the polymers we actually go through another step where we add additives like pigments or mold release or stabilizer and this process is called processing step or compounding step we get the intermediate products. Now, most of the large companies which make polymers like say Dow or DuPont or Sabic, they actually sell polymers in this stage. So, they make these intermediate products and this they actually sell it the in our, our case we have a Hindustan uh, Haldia Petrochemicals also which makes this type of um, uh, polymers and they sell it market. So, some small companies take this. Uh, these pellets and use it for further processing. Now, in this particular processing or compounding step, we can also get the final product if the shapes of the products are simple like sheets or film films, then in this step itself we can get the final products like sheets and film. But most cases the intermediate products are sold like this in terms of granules or powder and then further additives are added and processing and fabrication or finishing is done to get the final product. Now, generally these are done not in a typical polymer company, but in original uh, equipment manufacturer. And then this after, after use this is uh, this goes for waste and where the waste management has to be done properly. Now, ideally we should able to reuse or recycle the, the polymers product after use and if not then we should be able to do biodegradation. So, at current scenario 
you know the bad name of polymers or plastics are because of this stage because after use still use polymers are fine they are very very useful products but after the use there is this is a big problem so current polymer research are are the, the main challenges of current polymer research is to find a proper way of handling the polymer waste either recycling or using biodegradation um, procedure. There is another challenge also which is probably lesser extent than earlier about the source of this monomers. Most of the monomers are sourced from raw materials. Uh, um, petroleum sources and as these uh, petroleum sources are dip getting depleted with time. So, we should be also looking for uh, finding out monomers from renewable resources, but because uh, currently uh, you know there are lot of applications where petroleum resources used to used to be used for that. Uh, now, they are also moving like in transport, they are moving uh, for renewable energy uh, energy uh, sources. That is the reason why you know, petroleum sources are probably is not depleting in that faster uh, rate than it was to be um, thought earlier. So, at present probably this uh, managing the waste polymer waste is probably more more challenging and more important than uh, generating a alternative renewable resources for monomers. The final polymer property of a products actually depend on three things. Uh, the polymer composition means the actual chemical structure, the molecular weight, molecular distribution, stereoregularity or if you copolymer, copolymer composition. Then also processing because processing actually gives you lot of uh, uh, thermal history uh, it um, this also been a very important uh, aspect of polymer properties and also the morphology of the polymer samples which basically determined by both composition and the processing they actually all three actually determine the final properties of polymers. Now, I will just quickly go through the names and examples of few commonly used plastics these are just for information purpose and these information are available in uh, various places. This is just for information purposes so that uh, somebody sh should be aware of uh, different plastics or different polymers. And for example, plastics com most uh, common plastics are commodity plastics, engineering plastics, thermosetting plastics and some specialty plastics. Commodity plastics are those which are used in very bulk amount for example, low density polyethylene, high density polyethylene, polypropylene, polyvinyl chloride, polystyrene and some of the their examples are listed here, their uses are listed here. Major engineering plastics their names are listed here and their uh, corresponding abbreviation, abbreviation. Engineering plastics means their application in engineering applications, structural applications not in commodity like household uh, common items application, they are use, used as in uh, engineering application or structural applications. Major thermosetting plastics are like phenol formaldehyde, urea formaldehyde, unsaturated polyesters, epoxy, melamine formaldehyde and their typical uses are listed here. You can uh, read it uh, or this, this is for information purpose. Other polymers are um, useful as fibers and rubbers or elastomers and some of the examples uh, are given as uh, cellulosic and nanocellulosic like acetate rhinon, rayon, rayon, polyesters, nylon as uh, fibers, acrylic uh, fiber is also there and rubber, natural rubber. C isoprene synthetic rubbers are also um, available and thermoplastic elastomers are also there which are based on styrene butadiene block copolymer. Now, 
typically you, you may also come across and see that um, the polymer bags are actually having this level. These levels are uh, related to different polymers and related to recycling code for um, the polymers as per society of um, plastic in, in industry and this letter corresponds to a particular polymer like one corresponds to PET which is recyclable, two corresponds to HDP high density polyethylene which is also recyclable, three is corresponds to polyvinyl chloride which is also recyclable. Others are not, uh, they are actually recyclable, but this practically is very difficult to do because they are generally, uh, they are used also have other in ingredients. So, basically it is very hard to recycle it recycle this uh, 4 to uh, 7 like LDP, P, polypropylene, polystyrene and other polymers. So, with this I come to the end of this lecture 5 and next uh, lecture I will move for step growth polymers or synthesis of step polymers by step growth polymerization.